Well, Razorback fans, it certainly looks like Arkansas basketball has a problem. Big problem. Like historically bad problem. So let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the owner and founder of Natty State Sports. You can follow us on all forms of social media at Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Had to get used to saying that one. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at JaceMedical.com. That's J-A-S-E Medical.com. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend, and I know last week I didn't have a chance to really do much of the podcast, and I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, It's been a very crazy week, and I'll update with all of that to you here in just a little bit on the podcast. But let's actually talk about some Razorback stuff, folks, Um, because we will get into some football news, too, since the last time we talked. And uh, I know there's been a lot going on in a lot of people's minds, but, you know, the the thing that I wanted to, to bring up was what... I personally got to witness, like many of you, on Saturday in Bud Walton Arena. You know, Razorback basketball this year has definitely adds their ups and downs. Now, there's times when they beat Purdue and beat Duke and looked like a, a really well-oiled machine and a really good team. And then there's times that they just look completely and totally outmatched, outgunned, outclassed, out everything, uh, like they did against Oklahoma just a few weeks ago. Or in this case, like they did against Auburn. Now, let me give some credit to Auburn. Auburn's a good basketball team. Bruce Pearl's a good coach. Uh, I know that I like to give them a hard time as a program, just like other ones do. But, I mean, I also admit when, you know, there's quality there. And there's no doubt that uh, Auburn has got a team that uh, I think is might be even better than what they had last year. So, that being said, there was zero real excuse for the absolute destruction that we witnessed in Bud Walton Arena on Saturday. Arkansas, historically, has always been a team that's been very tough at home. And what we saw on Saturday was a record-breaking performance where Arkansas had their largest defeat in Bud Walton history. They lost by 32 points at home. 32. Now, when you hear that most in history... When you hear it put like that, it really puts things into perspective because you're talking about Arkansas never having a loss that was that bad under Stan Heath or under John Pelfrey or under Mike Anderson. Like Those are coaches that had some ups and downs, more downs than ups, I'd say, overall. But none of them lost by 32 points at home. And it was really disappointing where you felt like in the first half you had some good things going. Keon Minifield was definitely holding his own and and trying to do what he could with the team. And there was about four minutes left in the first half. And Arkansas was actually leading in the game. It was a close one, but they were leading. And then stuff just went bad. Just went bad. Defense, offense, everything just went bad. And before you knew it, in the way that the game ended, or at least the half ended, Arkansas found themselves down by seven points. Uh, I think they ended, uh, Auburn ended on an 11-3 run, and Arkansas had a hole to dig out of. Okay. Hey, thirty-seven po- uh, the 37-point deficit, it's not impossible. Make some halftime adjustments, come back out, get the energy of the crowd in behind you, and it can really change some things. But that's not what happened. Because Arkansas then got outscored 46 to 21. Arkansas scored 21 points in the second half. 21. Arkansas shot in the second half 22% from the field, 33% from three, and 75% from the free throw line. But in the game in general, they shot 31%, 29% from three, and then 53% from free throw. But it didn't matter. 
Arkansas had 13 turnovers, only eight assists. They only had four steals. Got out rebounded by 14. I, I, it wasn't even like that poorly, or not that even that big of a game when it comes to fouls either. I mean, Auburn went eight of 11 from the free throw line. So it's not like they just got to shoot a lot of fouls. And it's not like any of them really got hot. You know, there wasn't just one player that was just killing them. In fact, Auburn looked like the less poised team at times. They got two technicals called on them. Guys just woofing, which I laughed about the Baker Mazzara technical. He literally dropped F two F bombs to Devo running back to the on front of the ref, and the ref teed him up, and he was like, I shocked. Like that's always the funniest thing I see in sports is when players like you drop F bombs in front of the officials, and then if you get tossed or if you get ejected, you're shocked by that. That's always been something that really uh, humored me. But either way, it just wasn't like Auburn did insane things. Arkansas is just, I've never seen, that might be, I don't even think it might be. I think that is the worst performance I've seen from an Eric Musselman coach basketball team. Plain and simple. The plus minus, which I know people can look at in different ways, but get this. Devo Davis was a minus 22. Makai Mitchell was minus 20. Trevin Brazil was minus 21. Keon Minifield was minus 17. Caleb Battle was minus 17. Tremont Mark was minus 14. And Chandler Lawson was minus 14. And those are just the ones in double digits. Pay Fall was minus 8 in the limited action he got. Joseph Pena was minus 9 in the limited action that he got. The only player that was actually plus for Arkansas was Jalen Graham. If you can believe it. He played 20 minutes and went 2 of 8 from the field. But had 6 rebounds, 2 steals. He was the only one. Trey Donaldson for Auburn was a plus 31. I don't see very many numbers get that high when it comes to plus and minus, but he was plus 31. They had a player at plus 31, plus 26, plus 21, plus 19, plus 19, plus 13. It was just absolute destruction. And it's to the point, too, where I start to sit here as a very positive person you know always saying hey you know it's 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 kind of how it goes it's the way it is you know this team can turn it around we've seen it happen before um you know they have a start, bad start to sec play you know that's is what it is um i even thought, think i saw the stat that this is now the third straight year that arkansas lost their uh, sec opener at home which is bad but you know the results came through so everyone starts to believe that maybe just maybe this is going to be a another random year like that, and then they get it going at the right time, and then it all gets put together, and then once the NCAA tournament hits, they click, they go, and they have success, just like they have in the past three years. I'm going to wait to see how the season plays out, but folks, it's really hard for me to even believe that about this year. Because even in last year, in the year before, you, you lost close games. You know, you lost some some close matchups, but you could look at it as like, okay, well, you had some injuries, uh, you had an inexperienced team, and you know there there was just a lot of things you could point to and maybe even feel good about. But like right now, like that, it's one thing if you just another team scores so much because they're hot, and then you just fall flat on your face. It's just like you got worked, you got embarrassed, you got run off the court in your home gym. Like, I just never had seen anything like it. I never would have guessed a team under Eric Musselman would ever look like that. And he was fired up after the game. And he should, and he has every right to be, and he needs to be. And he understands it. You know, he's we're, we're not talking about anything that he doesn't already know. He knows about that. But it's extremely discouraging to see that type of performance. You know, I felt like the final two games of the non-conference slate, which weren't against, you know, high-end opponents. But I felt that there was some good things that they had going on. And with the addition of Keon Minifield, I felt like that was really going to open up some doors. But th there hasn't been any of that. Like, guys that you thought like you can count on, like Devo Davis is just not... Devo's been... It's been rough for Devo. And any, you know, guys like Trevin Brazil, who has all the upside in the world, but... You know, he still has his own struggles. 
Tremon Mark and Caleb Battle, guys that shown that they're capable of doing some great things. Like Caleb Battle in this game had four points. So I don't really know what to think. You know, I, I, I don't really know what to think. I think, though, that this team is not near what the teams must have had previous years. They have talent. I think individually, and especially, they have talent. They have some things about them that make you feel like, okay, well, man, if they play really well, then they get it going. But and we, we've seen it against Purdue and Duke. Again, high-quality teams, they perform well. But it's almost like any time that they get something thrown in their way or have some sort of adversity hit them, they're just mailed in. I, I, again, I wish I could make sense out of it. I really do. I wish I could make sense out of it. And I, I think Mus is also sitting there just saying, I, I wish he could make sense out of it too. Like he's, like he's coaching the same way. He's doing the same things. It's just a matter of finding what makes this team go. And right now, there's nothing that's making them go. I'm not closing the curtain on them. I hope, I hope to goodness that they do figure it out and they turn it around and they figure out something. But this has kind of been a team that we've seen all year long, at least so far, that they've had these struggles. They've had the struggles of their identity, of who's going to be what, and the inconsistent play leads to something like this. And right now, with the schedule that you have in front of you, especially some of these road games in the SEC that aren't going to be easy, I mean, how do you feel confident about winning any of those games? How do you feel confident about beating any team in the SEC right now with that type of performance being the latest one you saw? They got serious work to do. And I'm not going, again, I'm not going to freak out or, you know, take any sort of crazy uh, way of approaching it or anything like that. I'm just saying... It doesn't look like it's the same. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Folks, I know we uh, chan I know we come to sports to really escape from all of the crazy realities of real life, but we got to talk about actually preparing for real life. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics right in the middle of one of the worst flu seasons that we've seen over a decade, and that's really scary. And I know that a lot of people have had illnesses, but I can't imagine feeling any more helpless than if somebody that I knew or that I loved or anything got sick while there were supply chain issues that kept from life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we'll be okay, always, because of Jace Medical. Jace Medical, in the Jace case, is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, uh, skin infections, and among others. This stuff could happen to literally any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter, and it will be reviewed by a board-certified physician and your medication will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. So go to jacemedical.com and use offer code locked on to get $20 off your first order. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. A uh, little football news, since again, since the last time we've talked, I feel like it's been so long. Uh, but it is true. It is true. Uh, but Arkansas football picked up a, a few high-quality transfer guys. And the real, the first one was a guy, Jordan Anthony. Jordan Anthony is a wide receiver, and he transfers to Arkansas from Texas A&M. Uh, he's 5'10", 160 pounds. I mean, didn't really uh, have, have a whole lot of stuff going on for him because uh, people may forget he was actually at Kentucky before he went to A&M, and now he is joining Arkansas. So I guess he really liked what Petrino was doing uh, in order to change and, and to get there. So he's a, he's a track and field guy. I, I was reading a little profile on him. Apparently that he owns uh, a lot of sub-11 second 100-meter times, including a PR of 10.21. So he is very uh, much a track guy. But 5'10", 160, I know people are bringing up the size and everything, and I'm like, you know, pretty sure Jarius Wright was about that size. I'm not trying to say, you know, oh, he's going to be like Jarius Wright. But the thing is, like, I don't care how big you are because I think that there's different types of way to be a wide receiver. And if, who knows, maybe he's a guy that 
You can get the ball into his hands in some capacity, and he takes care of the rest. There's players like that. So Arkansas was able to get a little bit added depth to the wide receiver position. But the two guys that they got added that were at positions of need, but also ones that got well people excited, uh, we'll start with the first one, and hopefully, I'm sure I'm going to mess up all these names, but it's Jaquindon Jackson, the running back, who is 6'2", 228 pounds, and has committed to Arkansas after transferring from Utah. Now, he was enrolled as a Texas Longhorn. So you think about that. He's from Duncanville, Texas. He was playing for Texas in 2020. Then he transferred to Utah back in 2020, played there for a few seasons, and now he is coming to Arkansas. And if you want an idea of uh, what people think about him, he is a four-star running back out of the transfer portal, and he's the 11th best running back in the transfer portal. So he's a big dude. But he's an athletic guy because he's played a lot of different positions and at least was in high school. Played defense and played safety too. But he's built. He's a big dude. He was also a high school quarterback, which I thought was pretty fascinating. Some people were trying to say that he was uh, compared to Dak Prescott uh, coming out of high school. But it's funny. So he's moved to running back. But yeah, he was a quarterback coming out. And he's a four-star quarterback. Had offers to Texas, Bama, Arkansas being one of them. Joe Craddock was his uh, recruiter. Baylor and Colorado. So move to the running back position, big dude, and it's a guy that, uh, again, Arkansas needs some depth and needs some help on the running back position after the loss of Rocket Sanders and A.J. Green. So, uh, yeah, which, by the way, I keep wondering, are we going to hear about Dominique Johnson, or did we? It's been such a blur here recently. I always, I've always wondered what was going to happen to him. I think he's still on the team, but I kept wondering about that. But either way, uh, the other big-time player that Arkansas got was, again, trying to pronounce his name. I, that's just going to be tough. It's like Anton Junkaj, uh, I think. Uh, but anyway, he's a defensive lineman. He's 6'3", 273 pounds. He's out of the state of New York, which is, I think that's kind of cool. So he's out of the state of New York. He is a four-star player coming out of the transfer portal. He's the number 10 defensive lineman in the transfer portal and the number 90 player overall. Now, what's interesting is when he was a prospect in high school, he like was a nothing. Like he didn't have any stars. He didn't have anything. Like it, it's kind of an interesting story on him. But he's a he's an edge runner or edge uh, defensive lineman, and a lot of places wanted him. So to see that uh, be again a, a, an issue of need and something that they definitely desperately needed for Arkansas to get him was was big time. So again, adding some players. It's not going to change everyone's mind as far as just like, oh, man, now that they've added two players, the season's going to change. But they're still building. They're addressing the needs, and these were big-time gets. So it'll be interesting to see what some of them do in spring ball. But I think that uh, still Sam Pittman, they still got a lot of work to do. They're still working towards it, but uh, still continuing to add to the mix of players. And also I saw K.J. Jefferson is uh, going to UCF, and I don't even think we talked about that, but or maybe we did. Again, last week's been such a blur, and I'll talk about why here in just a second. But first, folks, got to tell you, the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. For instance, like you have the live same-game parlays, you find bets in the new Explore tab, you can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, it's the best way to find all those popular parlays as well. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet an easy layup. It's FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, again, I appreciate everyone being patient with me and uh, working with me on this. I'm going to try to make this to where I do all five podcasts this week. It's I'm going to try. Um, but for those of you who don't know and have maybe been missing out, I've been starting up a new company, and it's officially called Natty State Sports for Natural State Sports, Natural State, Arkansas, all that fun stuff. And uh, it's really exciting, folks. It's really exciting. And the the launch so far has been awesome. And the response has been great. And so I'm very appreciative of a lot of you who listen to this podcast, who have also supported me in this new venture. Uh, It's going to be awesome. But uh, we've been just putting it all together. 
Uh, I got an office space in downtown Fayetteville, sixth floor of the Encore Bank building. Best view you'll ever get when it comes to a business and comes to an office uh, in the city of Fayetteville, especially in the downtown area. But uh, we're going to be moving in this week and hopefully getting all our supplies in and being able to create some really amazing content. Uh, but because of that fact, it's like I'm still going to be doing a live show with Natty State Sports. And it's going to be called the John Neighbor Show. And I'm going to be live streaming from 4 to 6 every afternoon. Uh, and it'll be on YouTube. It'll be on Facebook, X, Instagram, everything. So it'll be a live stream show. But there'll be other things too. There'll be video content. There'll be you know, the stuff with NIL, which we're going to be hitting hot and heavy. Nothing but NIL, NIL, NIL. So we're going to be doing a lot of that, just trying to get players uh, a platform to do some fun stuff and be able to compensate them for it and ing- increase their brand. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to have, you know, I think I mentioned podcasts. We're going to have written content as well. Basically, there's nothing that we're not going to be able to do. We're going to do live shows from places. We're going to feature businesses. It's essentially going to be a, a one-stop shop, one-stop hub, if you will, uh, for all things Arkansas sports here in the natural state. Uh, I think that mainly driven by Razorbacks, but we'll venture out to other things too. Because I personally, I'm looking forward to when we start doing Natty State food or Natty State outdoors, Natty State business, stuff like that. Uh, Just increasing the brand and increasing the whole organization in a way that is going to really be tremendous. And we're also going to sell merch too. So I'm excited about that part. Uh, I I would love to sell merch. Can't wait to sell merch. And to me, that thing is going to be uh, cool because I'm not a very good graphic designer, as you can tell probably from all of my graphics and stuff that I make, but uh, I at least have an idea of what type of shirts I think are pretty cool. So we'll be doing that too, but it's just going to be everything for Arkansas, all about Arkansas, all about doing what we can for Arkansas, having fun with people from Arkansas. And so I, I cannot express my excitement and again, your patience, each and every one of you uh, during this time, because again, this week is going to be tough. Uh, I feel like, though, next week, though, like once we officially get it off the ground and going and we launch it and there's not this back and forth stuff, uh, I think that once that actually happens, I'll be able to really get back into a routine of doing the podcast uh, more consistently because I hate missing out on it. I I really do. There have been times where I was going to try to do it, but it's just because other things kept popping up. I couldn't. So I, again, I apologize. I hate, I hate that I've not been able to do the podcast and as effectively and as uh, consistently as I need to be doing. So I apologize, but it's, it's going to be a means to an end and it'll be better and it'll get better and we'll get to a point to where it's all going to work out. But I just wanted to explain everything to everybody, give a little update and uh, be sure to tune in for the uh, signing day that we're going to be having on Friday because we're going to be signing our big name for big guys can't wait to have it happen, but we'll talk about that later. Either way, appreciate everybody listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors underscore underscore. If you want to do it that way too, and we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.